In the last video, part two, making this collet chuck, I was cutting the thread for the collet screw onto the lathe spindle, which is inch and a half by 8 TPI, and I said that the lathe compound slide should be set at an angle of 29 degrees. I did set it at an angle of 29 degrees, but I set it the angle against the compound slide, like that, and it should have been set against the lathe bed, which gives it a much steeper angle. Uh, I realised once I started to edit the video it was wrong, and there was one or two people quickly pointed out to us it was wrong, uh, I appreciate that. So what I did, I made another one. Uh, so now I've got one with the right thread, one with the wrong thread. I tried to clean the thread up by taking a deep cut just on the cross slide and I wasn't happy with it. Um, it's a common mistake. And I showed everybody how to do it wrong. Thanks. I set the angle gauge to 29 degrees and I set the compound slate, the, set the compound rest at a 29 degree angle in relationship to the cross slate. The correct way to do it is to set the angle of the compound slate at 29 degrees in relationship to the lathe bed, which gives it a much steeper angle, more like that. Can you appreciate that's running parallel to the lathe bed and that's the angle of the cross slate. It also means when the tool is mounted, the tool will be mounted like that. Right, we've got the cross slate set at the right angle now, which is 29 degrees against the angle against the bed. And if you look at it, the tip of the tool, that angle of the tool there, the trailing edge of the tool is the same angle as the compound slate. So when you turn it in, you put your cut on with the front edge, and the trailing edge just cleans it up. That will give you the proper thread. That's the one I made with the wrong thread. Well, it's the right thread, but it's, it's slightly wrong inside. Well, it's wrong. It does go on. So what I did last night, I made another one. I've done a bit more machine on it, which I did video, but I, I cut the thread with no camera running. Uh, concentrated on what I was doing, got it right. Exactly the same procedure. Just had the compound at the right angle. It's actually a better fit. It screws on nice. I'm happy with that. Very happy. Anyway, the jobs are good now. Before I take it out of the chuck, I'm going to use the chuck as a rough indexer so I can scrape some lines along here so I can drill four holes in. To use a tummy bar so I can, so I can get it out of the, so I can score it off the mandrel. Just eyeball the end of your tool. Central there. This tool's on centre height, so the centre of the. Fetch it along. Put a mark on like that, that's all it takes. We'll do all four. Right, so I've got four, I've got four marks equally spaced. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drill a hole in, and I can use my chuck key as a tommy bar. Chuck key is always here, I can't lose it. We'll go for three quarters of an inch. Let's put a mark on it. What I need now, I need four holes machining into here. So when I screw it on onto the lathe, I can get it back off. I'll drill holes in there. I'll make the holes the same size as the chuck key handle from your 3-jaw chuck, which is always on the lathe, so it'll be be able to use that to, uh, to loosen it. I've got a centre drill lined up. I've got the job in the vise up against my stop. I'll lock the table off.
zero or zero. I might just, I can tell, I'm going 400, 400 thou. I can tell 400 thou. I'll go in there. That'll do the whole little, isn't it? See these positions aren't critical as long as they're as long as they're reasonably symmetrical. Chuck will probably be tight because it has had some stick. The ideal way is to put a bit of square bar in. And lock it. We use a square bar to loosen it. We've got a spin lock on here. Spin lock's engaged. It wasn't that tight. That, that wasn't forcing it. It's got to the stage now where I can't find anything. I have to tidy up. Clean the lid off, put things away. Little 
bit of oil. Screws are nice. So now, spin the lock in. I can tighten it. Loosen it off. Quite true. This is the interesting bit now. We've got to bore the taper in the end here to take the collets. We're also going to turn this down and put a thread on. The thread that goes on there is 40 by 40 by 1.5, I think. Measure up and see. A commercial holder I bought from another machine. Cheap and nasty thing, uh, but at least I've got some dimensions to work at. So basically, I want that on the end of there. I know I've got to go an inch and a half from there, has to be left with plenty of metal on, and the rest can be turned down. Just take a, a nice light cut across the face just to clean it up. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a clock gauge on it, onto that face, onto that face. I know it'll run through now, but I'm going to take the chuck back off and put it on again to make sure I can repeat the accuracy. If I can't, if that goes back on and this runs out, I'm wasting my time. As you would expect, that's no running out at all. Uh, I'm going to take the chuck off, put it on again. As long as I get no run out, I'm happy. Right, I'll take it off, put it back on again, and make sure we've got the same, the same run out. Right. Don't know what you can see that clock is, but it's not moving. That's why all the time was spent on the register making sure it is a good fit. So you can take the chuck off, put the chuck back on and you know it's going to run accurate. Clock gauge works. I've got a clock gauge that doesn't work that I use for things I haven't quite got right. <laughs> Take a nice light cut. Normal procedure, make sure it's going the right way. Just struggling a bit. Get the bed, get the box for the belt strip next. Take a decent cut.
that's a reasonable finish. On a big alley, the more power, you can run it faster and take a heavier cut again. But on small stuff like this, you can't. So I'll take a lighter cut, slow off feed, see what sort of finish I can get on it. I would say, do some slow. It's reasonable, but uh, I can do better. Run it faster. Very late cut. Reasonable, but not uh, crank the speed up a bit. Up a bit. I put the finish on now. It's not always a slow, slow speed that gives you the good finish. That's good. It's amazing how you get a real good finish where the interrupted cut is. I don't know why that is, but that's. So I got the best finish there with the lead running really fast in a fast feed. I think the next thing I'll do is I'll machine the taper for the collets. I know I can cut the thread on the outside, no problem. Uh, cutting the taper is probably the hardest bit of the whole job.